And we're going to cover specifically intra-flight communications and inter-flight communications. Intra being within your own flight, you're the wingman talking to lead, or you're the lead talking to your wingman. And inter-flight is going to be two flights talking to each other, uh, generally speaking, although it could cover a flight and uh, maybe ATC and other things, I guess, as well. But in this case, we're just going to cover flights talking to flights. So, for example, the two flight leads are talking to each other and coordinating. That would be inter-flight. And then uh, the taxi two at the bottom there, that's going to be GCI or AWACS. They both are under that heading. Can everybody see the slides okay? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to split this up here on the left side. Let's take a look. This is the format. Just remember when you're calling somebody, um, which order you want to get it in. Um, so if you're calling somebody else, you want to let them know first by calling them their name, or call sign really, their call sign, your call sign, and then your message. Uh, and the reason why we have to stress this is because different, uh, I think, I forget where it was, somebody said they were, I forget where they were, if they were a police officer or something, and their radio communications were the complete opposite. They had to say their call sign first, but, and it just got them confused. Uh, but if you only do it one way, it's not too hard to remember it. The important thing, though, when you're about to talk is you want to gather your thoughts first. Don't push the mic down uh, to transmit and then think about what you want to say. That's the wrong order. And the reason being that it's important here is that when you are pushing the transmit button, you are locking that frequency up for everyone else. Nobody else can transmit on that frequency within, I forget the range in BMS. It's, I think it's like 200 miles or something. So you definitely don't want to do that. So we like to call it push to talk versus push to think. You want to think first before, before you push the button. The next thing is to respect the order of the transmissions. What does that mean? So if your flight lead is going to give an order to the flight, a directive, and tell everyone what to do, the order of the transmission should be done by the number two in the flight, then the three, and then the four. So you should be listening for that order. So if the flight lead gives an order, two is going to acknowledge. If you're number three, then it's your turn. The problem, again, if you get it out of order, is that people step on each other. They both transmit at the same time, and you jam the frequency, and nobody can hear anything. The order of transmissions also counts for um, UHF as well between other flights. If somebody gives an update to the package, and the package needs to respond, like a, let's say a roll call, then you're going to want to have a package order. And I think generally we're going to use the one that if you start with VHF 15 in the package, if you're the first in the package, you're the first one to speak, and so on. Is that clear to everyone about package order? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, acknowledgement is done by call sign, and by call sign it can actually be just your slot number. It, the question you have to ask yourself is who do you represent in this, in this call, in this transmission, who, who are you representing? So if your flight lead is telling you something and you want to acknowledge, you can just say two, because there is, there is only um, one two in your flight, right? There's only one person with that. Uh, sorry about that. I'll have to not do that again. Okay, this time I promise I got it. Amateur hour. I know, you know, it's just uh, I should have transmitted doing the other software, but it's fine. Okay. Yeah, performance anxiety. Ah, uh, you know. Okay. So you have to ask yourself the question, who do you represent? If it's just yourself and you're talking to your flight lead, then the slot number is what he expects to hear. So if he says, uh, two go spread, you can just literally say two. That's how you acknowledge is your call sign. On the other hand, uh, you would use the flight call sign if you're speaking for the flight. This is mostly for flight leads. So if uh, one flight is telling, let's say, uh, some flight's calling Weasel 2 and is telling Weasel 2 um, the door is open, you can begin your attack. Weasel 2 can just literally respond with Weasel 2. And that's an acknowledgement for his uh, flight that he's acknowledged it. It doesn't have to be the flight lead speaking, by the way. We'll cover this in a little bit, but... The flight lead can assign somebody to deal with UHF comms. The question you have to ask is, who are you representing? If you're just the wingman and you're not told to speak on UHF, most of the time you just say two. Or whatever your slot number is. 
For the full call sign, that's generally when you need to be individ uh, individually recognized as the jet, your, your jet, separate from your flight. And that's when you're talking with GCI. So if you're asking for a bogey dope for yourself, you got to use your full call sign. And that's because GCI is to find you in the world. And it's not good enough to just look at the flight. At least if you're separated, it's not good. Uh, also for acknowledgement, do not use copy or Roger. Uh, and don't over acknowledge things. If somebody gives you an informative call, like if GCI just says, here's the picture, you don't have to acknowledge that. In fact, don't acknowledge that. Just listen for the picture and just go with it. Instead of acknowledging, uh, we'll cover this later, you want to give intentions. So the other things on the right, I think everyone already generally knows if you've flown with us, VHF is for intra-flight, that's for your own flight. UHF is for flight leads and communicating between other flights and be with GCI and all of that. So we want to follow the comms ladder. Everything is standard in BMS. Uh, package comms are UHF-6. We don't use UHF-1. There are exceptions. There are points where I think that UHF-1 would be very handy, but right now it's usually skipped in the comms ladder just because we're, we're doing much smaller operations than what I think we'd want to use it for. So the type of radio operations for the intraflight, lead can give you directives or lead can give you informative calls. If the lead is giving you a directive, then he's telling you to do something. He's directing you to do something. And generally speaking, you want to acknowledge that. Um, I believe that push, though, um, Prime can help or somebody else can correct me on this, but I believe that push does not require an informative or does not require an acknowledgement. But I believe that go um, requires the acknowledgement. Yes. On the appropriate so, channels, like go... Uh, tactical, you would say two, and then when you when the lead goes the tactical, uh, lead would say checking in tactical, and it will be two. That would be the only, the only yeah. thing. So push tactical would be more like just switch that channel and monitor it. Yeah. Um, informative calls are just leads giving you a heads up as to what he's doing, and you don't have to acknowledge that. If you don't know what he's saying, you can always you know. You know, request say again uh, and hear what he's saying. But otherwise, you don't need to acknowledge that. An informative call is just, you know, FYI. For the wingman, um, when you're going to transmit for intraflight, it's over VHF. Good things to say. I have a list of these. If you're unable to do something, if you're given a directive and you literally cannot do it because of something bad, you can say unable. In this case, it's already assumed who you're speaking to. So you don't have to say one. Um, and in that case, you just say your own call sign. So two, unable. And that very clearly communicates, you know, to one that you're not able and you're not going to do what he just told you to do. Yep. If and, you're going to not. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it also means like two unable. And, and you you come to a point where you can explain why. Don't just say two unable. Just be silent for five minutes. Like you have to say two unable and say why, like within not really a within, but like within a reasonable amount of time, explain why you're unable. Right, so let's say something goes wrong with your jet and controls-wise. Let's say you've taken AAA fire and he's telling you to flow somewhere and you're just barely struggling to maintain control. You're too unable. Um, you probably want to get twos hit or you know, something like that really out yeah. fast. Probably before you even get the unable. Um, but those are the examples of things. Unable is good. Acknowledgement is good by just saying your, your slot. And defensive is also good. Defensive pretty much also lets your lead know you're not probably able to do anything in the next little while. So those are very good things to say. Now, the next section right here, we got to think before we transmit, and you got to ask yourself the question, why would you say this? What's the point of saying what you're about to say? And sometimes what we have is we have wingmen that give informative calls. And I'm not saying these are bad. What I'm saying is that you have to think about these because the context of these sometimes may not really require you to say these things. So, um, for example, let's take the first one. Two is letting his flight know that he can see somebody or a group of people on the radar 20 miles north of their position. Now, you'd have to think, why would two say that? Now, it could actually be because two is saying that because he's one, he doesn't know if one actually sees it. Or maybe he's concerned, right? We're getting close to these guys. 
you don't know the context of why he would be saying this. So you have to think, is this a useful call? So I'll give you an example. What if you just take off and you're deep, deep south in Korea, in South Korea? You're probably, there's probably no point in letting him know that there's friendly traffic by, by the airport. That's probably a useless call. But on the other hand, if you're patrolling and you're um, patrolling an area near the flight and all of a sudden you've got new contacts 20 miles north, that might be more useful for two to let his lead know. Yeah, I have an example, Bible. And Sure, um, go ahead. So I was in UOAF flying a SA-11D mission with four ship, uh, and we had like 20 or 25 dudes total. Um, and lead is doing all kinds of like figuring out where to go, making sure that we're not getting hit, making sure that everybody's where they're supposed to be. And I'm getting radar contacts from uh, enemies, and I'm like, lead be advised, uh, radar contact, bullseye, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> So that's a good use, in my opinion, a good use of, um, hey, radar contact, bullseye, 069 for 69 time, you know. Yes. Uh, I would agree with that. So in that case, um, what it sounds like you're also indicating is that you were aware that your lead uh, had some level of helmet fire. Yes. That he was preoccupied with other things and not performing what he was supposed to theoretically at that point. And that's, a, that's also a good point where the wingman can step up. The problem is that um, usually the, the better way, um, obviously, is that the lead is aware. But if he's not, you want to have, hopefully, the number three is the one with the most experience who steps up then. But the, in times where, let's say, for whatever reason, you're doing a grinder and you can't, absolutely. Especially, I mean, especially if it's one and two by themselves, you know, pushing hot. That's a time for two to speak up if he knows that, that one is not seeing this. Now, in general, between GCI or, or AWACS, you should have an awareness. You should not be surprised by something 20 miles north. That's the, the whole, you know, should versus what actually happens. So, but the point here is that, and I think that was a good example you brought up, you want to think about why you're transmitting before you transmit. Um, so this is stuff that I think everyone probably knows, but it's good to go over. And then two ship, one is lead, two is the element. And the obvious order of succession is if one gets shot down, two takes over. In a four ship, one is the lead and three is the element lead. And so three takes over if one is shot down. And the other thing that's important about this is that in intraflight, three may end up taking more of a leadership role depending on what's going on in a four ship. So it's just something to be aware of in terms of the communications. It's also if one needs help with something, he's probably going to be relying on three a little bit more to fill in that gap. So three should be your second most experienced person in general. Uh, any questions so far on, on either the intraflight uh, role breakdown or the radio operations at this I, point? I only have one question and it's what do you do if, if you're respecting the comm channels, but two doesn't answer? Like how ah, that's a good question. Yeah. So that, uh, you should give a, um, I think we, we were going with like, you know, a five second delay. So if it says, if one says fence in and everyone's quiet, you wait, you know, so many seconds and then three can respond. So I think we're going with about a five second delay on that. Yeah, it sounds about, about right. Generally, like if it's something, but yeah, you, you have to just know how long it would, it would be if it's like okay it's been a while now just skip all right yeah. now let's say i'm two and i realized that i i messed up and i didn't respond do i just go last at that point yes okay yeah Probably that'd be perfect depends, depends on the situation if you're going to get shot down it's more like you would want to speak up quicker but if there's like a don't you know if your guys are like ingressing and you know you got like 100 miles until you get to the target I would say I would wait like 10, 15 seconds for two to respond probably. But again, but, but that, that, also... that, that's like difference between one telling like saying fence in two doesn't say anything, three fence in four fence in, <laughs> in, in comparison to like, you're in a dog, you're in a, a BVR and, and two gets, like, you're not asking everybody what your status is, I guess it, it's more of a, 
informational thing. If if nothing's happening and two gets spiked, then two would say I'm spiked something something. I don't know if we're kind of on the on the same same road here, but and yeah, it depends on the severity of what's going on. If it's just regular chatter like fencing and things like that, then the order is more important just to keep people from stepping in each other and wasting all that time. Yeah. In the real chaos of a dog fight, like radios are probably going to be really messy. Yep. All right. Um, so this now we've reached the interflight section. So obviously this uses UHF uh, to not step on the VHF of the intraflight. So the lead is responsible for the flight and for the flight comms. The flight call sign will be used. So he doesn't have to respond with his own call sign, you know, like Falcon 4-1. It doesn't matter whether it's one responding or three is responding, or even if they have two responding, as long as the flight lead is in control and is assigned somebody to handle the comms. Usually he handles it himself. But the important thing, if you're another flight, is that the other flights in your package are acknowledging and talking, communicating in the appropriate way. It doesn't matter who's handling the comms. Um, but like I said, most of the time, it's just the flight leads talking to each other. It's easier for them to handle. It's either easier for them to get an idea of what the other flights are thinking and doing, and then they make decisions based on that. So the type of calls that are good to say over UHF, definitely all of your Fox calls. Fox 3 is definitely a call you will hear on UHF and that you're going to want to hear on UHF. Another call you're going to want to hear is targeted. That's an indication that a group is... Um, that some enemy group is being targeted by one of your flights, whoever made the call. But the important thing about target isn't just that they're locking it up, it's that they're contractually now obligated to prosecute that target. They're making a promise that until they call out that they're dropping that group, they're prosecuting it. And that's very important because if you're, let's say, the seed flight, and you know you've got some bandits coming in 40 miles away, and the cap is promising they've got it, they can't just peace out on you and leave you to get surprised. Quick question. Yes. In that case, what would be the difference between targeted and committed? That's a good one. So committed in that case is more of, if I recall correctly, it's more of an, almost like an investigative toward of we're flowing towards that and we're heading towards them. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to check them out, but it's not a promise that you're planning on shooting them. Tracking. Um, that's my understanding anyway. We can pull up, actually we should pull up one of the manuals that I have in the references to, to confirm that. I, I, I believe that's, that's it. It's like the one is like, you're, you're going to check up on it. Another one is targeted. You're going to actually start sorting and stuff. So committed is a good early call. If you've yeah, got early, like guys coming yeah. in screaming at you and you're the like, deep. okay, cap's going to go check it out. Yeah. They're committed. And then they're, and, and it's also the idea of committed is that they can't, process another group right so they don't want to split now so the, the cap flight is busy checking out this other thing but they're not shooting it whereas targeted is the next stage um coordination between flights is the next thing you're going to hear that's usually on bigger uh bigger flights you hear a lot more of that when you actually do have five flights in a package you hear a lot of coordination which is pretty fun it is fun and then, obviously, uh, GCI or AWACS comms are also heard on tactical on UHF. And in terms of the wingmen, the wingmen should, generally speaking, stay off of the uniform unless they are making a relevant call. Relevant calls would be definitely Fox calls. If you're shooting something, please say that on uniform for multiple reasons. Uh, one is that it's good for other flights to know what's going on in general if you're actually shooting anywhere you know, within their neighborhood. It's good for them to have an idea of where things are going down. And the other thing is that GCI, it really helps GCI to keep a mental picture of what's going on, to understand that you fired. They see you're flying at the enemy, the enemy's flying at you, and all of a sudden you turn away. And they don't know, did you shoot at them? <laughs> are you being chased? Did you not see them? So this is where it's, it's better for GCI to actually hear the shot call and understand what's really going on. I got a quick question. Sure. Do targeted and committed calls use or reference bullseye or mostly just groups in their direction? You can do either. Uh, you could 
do a bullseye direction, like a bullseye reference. So um, Falcon 3 committed group 25652. The other thing you could do is you could say committed northern group if GCI has already classified it as the northern group. Oh, okay. So if you're, I'll get it, I get it, yeah. Which is actually, yeah, it's it's smoother to do if you've got that. You can actually, by the way, as an aside, you can actually declare that way too. So if you think you've got the northern group locked up, you can actually confirm that by saying to the GCI, declare northern group. If I'm not mistaken, that's an actual thing. Yeah, you can do that. And Yeah, and so then they'll tell you northern group, bullseye, this, 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 and they'll give you, and if it matches what you've got, you know, you know that you were right. But sometimes it could be kind of hard to remember if he calls four different groups. Sometimes it could get a little convoluted to remember which one is which. So yeah, then, usually I just go back to saying bullseye if I forget which one's north, which one's south, which one's center. I'd probably always just call by bullseye because yeah. you lose orientation, you use the wrong reference. <laughs> like, That's true. Yeah, but, you don't have to, but it, sometimes it's it's easier when you're flying. Let's say you got two groups splitting you, and you know which one's which one this is the north one that's the south one yeah and then it's a little easier yep right so the difference between AWACS and gci AWACS is obviously ai and gci is human that's how we differentiate it doesn't have to be this way but this is just how we do it in bms um or we have been doing it in most communities that i've been in the key point is in transmission um, that's the first thing to notice. The pilot chooses to transmit. You could use key presses. You could use Q and type to, you know, basically Q1 and Q2. You can't do that with a GCI. The GCI, you must speak. You can't just say declare. You have to give a bullseye. It's funny because we've had, you know, in, in the thick of action and everything, you kind of forget and you're just like, Hey, uh, declare. And you think like they have your cursor or something like the AWACS does. So that's something, it's an extra step for people that aren't used to flying with GCI. You actually have to look at the bullseye of your target or, or know what you're doing um, in terms of targeting, whether it's a group name or, or you know, like you said, just use the bullseye. Um, the other thing is just the a AWACS voice is sometimes easy to step on and you can still hear it um, because they can, you can talk over it and people can talk and you can kind of hear both streams at the same time. You can't do that with the GCI. GCI comms will be jammed for pilots if uh, another pilot is speaking. So we have to be very careful with our the length of transmission. Do not push the transmit button and hold it too long. You know, get off the transmission as, as quickly as you can. But at the same time, use the GCI services, especially if you're a flight lead or if you're the element lead going hot. Definitely use the GCI. Don't get surprised. So is that true for Victor calls as well? Um, which part? If if I broadcast on Victor and you're speaking on Uniform, it completely blacks you out? No, no. So, well, it's on the same frequency on the same uh, radio. So if I'm speaking on Victor and you're speaking on Victor on the same frequency, everybody is uh, jammed from that communication. All they hear is that dubstep noise. Right. But you can speak on Uniform and Victor, like those two radios simultaneously can be going. And uh, another on that about getting stepped on so if you're if you're about to talk if you're about to talk and and like half a second before you start talking and key the mic someone else starts talking you need to stop talking because the other person has no idea you started talking because they started talking half a second before you so if that happens make sure you unkey the mic and wait for them to finish and if you keep keying the mic it's just, just going to be block the entire time and the only person that knows is the person who hit the mic second so always keep that in mind that's a good point that's one of those uh pieces of knowledge that uh you kind of pick up in, in bms but it's not quite explicitly exactly put and, and, a good example. and very rarely both people key the mic at the same time and it's like literally a 10 12 second just block it, it happens very rarely, but if you're the second person, please unkey the mic. And even if it's an important call, there's no point in holding that that button down because the guy's already got the frequency, the first guy. So if you're the second guy and you think, but it's really important, it doesn't matter, you can't break through. 
no one's going to hear it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So it's always correct to unkey the mic. If you absolutely have to override, like if it's the most dire of circumstances, like the president of the United States is about to be shot down Good. and you have to get that on the radio for some reason, cool. you, do, you should switch to guard or something else, at least in BMS. I wouldn't do that. In, I don't think I'd be announcing that on guard. In, uh, no. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but in BMS, that would be a way to kind of get a UHF override. All right. So if you want to speak to a GCI, how do we do it? First thing is understand bullseye and bra. I know that uh, Prime has some great videos on these sorts of subjects. So if you feel you need to brush up on uh, directions and things like that uh, along the idea of bullseye, those resources are very effective. In terms of actually communicating, you just be able to speak clearly and effectively. So this goes back to, you know, think about what you want to say before you say it, then cue the mic. Um, and just listen to what GCI is saying, listen to what your flight lead's saying, listen to what the other flights are saying, etc. cetera. And, uh, and, and think about what's going on. What are they really telling you? One of the big things that I notice is that people don't listen to ranges. When you tell them, for example, in a briefing, Mar is 20 miles, and they say, okay, and then you're as GCI telling them, hey, these guys are hot and they're 25 miles out. Um, often flight leads will go, okay. <laughs> it's like that extra five miles. They think they got a lot of time. And it's, it's like, well, no, you got five miles before you're supposed to turn and run. So you should already have been, you know, you got to be doing something. In fact, you should have been doing something like 20 miles earlier than that. But, but that's the way it goes. Um, so for the IVC config, you don't have to worry about it if you didn't change anything. But if you did, for whatever reason, go into your IVC config and change outsiders to something other than all. Um, please undo that change. It's uh, very important so that you can hear uh, GCI. Right now, it's a standard feature in 4.36, which is very, very welcome. So in terms of what the pilot can say to the GCI, these are a list of certain things that you can say. Not are all going to be necessarily useful today. The big ones are probably going to be request picture. Um, that one should be mostly said by cap flights and generally early on when they get on station. We don't, you shouldn't be asking for a picture all of the time because it, it's not always as clear or it's not always as, as um, efficient, let's say. If he's describing groups that are all over the place, it's not always efficient to have him constantly updating you with that. Uh, bogey dope is the same as request vector to nearest threat. So if you want to know who your nearest threat is, let's say even if you're doing a bombing run, you're done, you want to know, hey, you heard a bunch of commotion of air-to-air, -air, cap was busy, what's going on? You can ask the GCI, hey, bogey dope, your nearest threat, you know, north, 50 miles, good. You're free to go home. There's no way that guy's catching up. And obviously, declares, and like we said, you can give a group name, you can give a... Um, Bullseye. You can even give a, I believe you can even give information with bogey dope, which is very interesting. I've heard that in the real comms where they, uh, they I think they said bogey dope northern group. Um, I think they said that one time. I think they also said bogey dope and they listed for both uh, him and his wingman. So a flight lead, you can get a little creative with how you ask these things and what you want AOX to, to do with the information or GCI in this case. Um, some of the others are, I mean, Fox, I think everyone's used that at least once. Yeah. Alpha check is to request a bullseye check. So you can literally have the GCI just verify. It's really useful if you're going to use custom bullseyes, which we will not. Um, spike calls. If you're getting spiked by something and you want to know the range, ask GCI. You say spike and you give the direction. And that's full call sign. Yes, you, you must. Full call sign. Full call sign, especially for bogey dope and uh, spike. For things like that require your location, uh, they need to know where you are. So if you're, you know, Falcon 2-4, spike north, and they might say Falcon 2-4, uh, you know, whatever it is, spike north, Falcon, or um, what you, like a fulcrum, 29 miles, or 30 miles, I guess they would say. So now you know it's a MiG-29, 30 miles north of you. And where that's helpful for is when you do get a spike, you don't always know the range. I mean, it's terrifying when they're locked onto you. Yeah. So if you can get an idea of, um, as you're defending, like, okay, how far are they from me? How much time do I have? Where can I go? What can I do? 
Uh, that's kind of useful. Um, Judy is a way to tell the AWACS to be quiet. So if, they're, if I'm a GCI, I'm going to be constantly telling you, hey, range 30 miles, range 25 miles, range 20 miles. If you've got it and you want me to stop updating you on that group that you're committed on, just, you know, whatever your call sign is, you know, gamble three, Judy. And that means I can stop updating you. You've, you're telling me you've got it. Uh, we covered targeted, and uh, lowdown is more for SAM placement. So if uh, GCI finds some SAMs that you didn't know about, that's a good way to to learn about that. I want to uh, let's see, go, go back to the targeted thing. Gump looked it up. So it seems like so target single target is a directive to assign group responsibility to a flight. So that would be GCI saying uh, saying that uh, targeted will be group responsibility has been met. So that would be the, the flight saying it. So targeted whatever group. Commit and committed would be the fighter, the fighter's intent to engage and in, in intercept. So commit is that, that frontline word to use if you're uh, basically making a promise, like yeah. to, to actually start attacking. Yep. Perfect. So yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, can continue the. No, no, that's that's about it. So commit would be it could be used interchangeably. Like we we'll know what you mean. Um, we won't be like oh he's set targeted. I don't he's probably not gonna shoot him. Like we won't really think of that. We'll just say he's he's over there working on whatever's happening and probably gonna shoot at some point. Yeah. Um. Obviously, if you can get it right, get it right. But yeah, but that's one big thing is we don't. I don't think anyone's ever jumped down somebody's throat for the wrong. Yeah. Uh, wrong uh, brevity usage. Um, no, no. Now, of course, if you do say like Fox Three on my wingman, I mean, then might you know, yeah, that might jumping. be a little, bit, be a little bit different. <laughs> um, one thing also I've noticed that I learned, um, I don't know, some months ago, and I just realized we were doing it wrong. If you're going to see, say, um, Fox Three, and you're going to say on a two ship, that means you're shooting at both ships. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you're only shooting at one, uh, don't don't say two ship or three ship or four ship. Yep. And, and you would say the Fox Three, Bullseye, whatever. Um, you you could say a uh, two ship lead contact. So that means telling you there's two of them, and I took the lead person because it, it it would be kind of um uh it wouldn't help anybody if you say Fox Three, um bullseye whatever and it's a four ship and no one knows that until they get started getting shot at so it's like four ship lead lead uh lead contact so you so you so people can know how many people are in that in that group what if you said fox three northern group that should means you, you fired one missile at, at the northern yeah group. whatever's over Would there you, should you specify which one you engaged as well like uh fox three northern group uh lead target lead, you can you don't have to but okay. you, you can Hopefully the, the size of the ship would be declared by GCI prior to the to this point. And then you wouldn't yeah. have to do this. But especially where it would be useful is if you notice, like let's say GCI declares it as a three ship heavy and all of a sudden you realize there's four of them. You know, so then uh that's something also I didn't didn't distinguish is that um context, I believe, is what the GCI should say. Four contacts, three contacts. But the I think the pilot's term is supposed to be strength, strength four, you know, or strength three or something like that. I'd have to look that up to be certain. But I believe that's how they they have it in one of the manuals. And either one, the pilot or the uh, the GCI can upgrade at any point. And say, oh, you know, Northern Group is now four ship heavy. Or now I think they'd say heavy group or something like this. Heavy group, yeah, heavy four contacts. Four, I think that's yeah. how they would do it. Because I don't think they ever say two ship, four ship in GCI speak. But no. So things that GCI can say, uh, terms like package, group, arm, contact. Those are the um, really the fundamental unit is the group uh, that they'll be dealing with. A group can be a singleton. It can be multiple contacts. Um, if you have multiple groups all you know marshalling together, it becomes a package. If let's say you have a four ship group coming at you, um, 
and then they split so that two moves towards the south, two moves toward the north. Um, that instead of renaming them as two separate groups, the GCI will refer to them as arms. So Northern Group, Western Arm, or something like that. If the arms further split, then they'll be known as contacts. Um, in terms of different groups, the relationship between two groups, it's either going to be an azimuth split or a range split. That's going to depend on, uh, well, the azimuth, whether it's more azimuth or more range. If they're one's in front of the other or if one's more to the side of the other. And there's a little bit of overlap between these. It's not a big deal. It's just useful to know the distance between the two groups. And then the, the group formations are going to be things like box, Vic, champagne, wall, things like that. Um, these are good to look up in the manual because they also have pictures associated with them and they explain the group naming and the conventions and how they look up. I won't get into details here, but it's just good to be aware of these. Um, for example, group naming, cardinal directions, we've all heard this, north group, south group, east group, northeastern group, things like that. If a group is changing heading, you'll often hear GCI say group maneuver or northern group maneuver. And they might tell you maneuvering, which means they're turning, but I don't quite know where. And maneuver north or flanking north, there could be all different terms like that that they could be calling. The last four terms here, recommend. This is where GCI thinks they have an idea for you. Things don't look good. If they recommend you flow cold, that's probably their polite way of telling you they think you've overextended. Um, or maybe there's a better defensive option rather than going one versus four. Maybe if you flow south, you'd have better support with your buddies that are, you know, somewhere else. Um, I would say that in general in DMS, if a GCI has been doing this for a while, you should listen to their recommendations, take them seriously. We don't usually run, I mean, you can, this is, this is all up to whatever a group does, but we generally do not run GCIs as like the authoritative, you know, controller of all, you know, flights and everything. We don't do it that way. Even when GCI is package lead, we still give leeway to the, uh, to the jets usually to make decisions to the pilots. That's just been typically the doctrine that has been here at the six and even at other groups that I've flown at. So generally GCI just recommends. When we have, um, um, a, call let's say for example a declare if gci can't find it gci can call clean and and that just means it, it doesn't mean it's not there it just means that gci can't see it so it's probably something there because you're seeing it but gci can't see it so therefore they can't help you yeah you're on your own on that one and then if you do if you you can id it though it's possible that you might id it so you can start saying you have a group there and maybe you've even identified it. You can, maybe you've got like um, the targeting pot on it. You can even tell what it is. So you can now declare it as hostile practically and give it to GCI. Now GCI, again, won't help you, but, but <laughs> at yeah. least they'll be yeah. aware of it. Um, and the, by the way, instead of clean, if let's say GCI loses contact with a friendly, the correct term is to say negative contact, and then they'll tell you who it is. So let's say negative contact, weasel 2-4. That means GCI can no longer see weasel 2-4. At that point, weasel 2-4 has to keep in mind that if he asks for a bogey dope or any sort of information, he can't just give his own call sign because GCI doesn't see him anymore. So if weasel 2-4 is still alive and not you know, plummeting in a fireball or something, and he asks for you know, a bogey dope or something, he's got to give his own bullseye as well. So bogey dope for weasel 2-4, bullseye, you know, 265, you know, 112. Something to keep in mind uh, when, when everything gets a little hectic. If, if GCI can't find you, though, they'll let you know. You know, in that moment when they're looking for you. We need to know <laughs> where we were at. Yeah. And then uh, last one here, copy shot. So if you call Fox 3, GCI may say copy shot. We generally don't always do that, but when it's quieter on the radio, I like to do that just to let them know that I'm actually paying attention and I got everything marked. Well, we'll be doing that during the simulation, which brings us to 
the final points where we can get moving. Uh, so the first thing is the Korea Basic Employment Manual. These are the references. Definitely take a look at that one. It comes with VMS, so you don't have to go hunting far. It's in your docs directory, somewhere under Real Manuals. And uh, it might be called the BEM, um, but generally speaking, it's, uh, it's in the docs directory somewhere. That one will contain some of this information. A lot that will be on GCI comms will be in the second document. That one um, is a real manual that is public. Um, I think it's an unlimited for distribution or yeah, something. Yeah, distribution use. is unlimited. Yeah. So no one's going to jail. It's a official document that is out, and it has all of the AWACS-style communications. That, I mean, it has so much in there. I keep studying it, and there's... I keep finding more stuff in there that I'm always surprised at. So definitely take a look at those, especially if you're thinking about being a BMS GCI, definitely take a look at the second one. But uh, deal with it piecemeal. It's very big. It yep. is a lot of information. So this is going to be what we're doing here. To practice this, we're going to be having blue versus red. Invulnerability will be off. And we're going to separate this operation into phases. The first phase is everyone's going to take off and marshal. Package leads will be running their show. So the flight leads, package leads, you guys have complete, you know, get your flights together and everything you need to do. And when you check in with the GCIs, the GCIs will acknowledge your check-in. And when everyone's ready, we're going to have a simulation combat controlled by the GCIs. So this will be a good practice for tactical communications. You're going to have to call your shots. You're going to have to call if you're targeted or committed, if you'd like. And we're going to have rules for the simulation combat. Then after that, we're going to... It, probably the Vipers will be running low on fuel, so they're probably going to have to do some AR or ground uh, refueling. But we'll see on the time. It may be that the simulation will go very short, and we may not need to do this. Um, is anybody objecting or concerned about the refueling? You okay. always got the lie. I'm good if it's uh, ground refueling, but if it's air to air, I might just crash against the tanker. Honestly, that would be fun to watch. Please record it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't think it'll be as much of an issue. Flight lead might, if you say you can't do it, flight lead might just have everyone land to refuel, or they might um, uh, split. They might something. have you tried anyway. Depends on your confidence level, yeah. or they might send you, you know, with your element lead to to land. It depends. But flight leads will have discretion on that, whether it's AAR or ground refueling. I'm confident I will crash. And then I we're going to have a live fire combat where we're going to actually, blue and red are going to try to kill each other. And we're going to do the same thing, but now we don't have to follow the artificial restrictions. Then hopefully for, you know, Craig wanted me to put this second last part as optional uh, landing, you know, for some of you. Yeah, some, some of you may die. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you will die. Although I'm not here to kill you, I'm here to kill you. Exactly. So, so don't go 100%. No. Go I mean, like... You guys You guys get 90%. I'm oh, gonna okay. Our, I'm going to limit our guys. We're not, we're I not actually think go all the way, but do it within the context of the... Well, we'll cover other things. Keep in mind that both sides have SAMs. So yes. one of the tactics that flight leads can have is they can always just fall back behind the line and use the SAMs as cover. So you don't have to run a suicide mission to run in there. So even if Craig comes in with all of his power of the red, you know, flight and everything, you guys can use the tactics that will put him at a disadvantage. Just wait. Eventually you guys have to face the aggressors in F-22s. Yeah, one day. One day. And then we'll obviously do a debrief. So this is the way the simulation is going to work. The GCIs are going to determine whether a shot counts. Um... When you're going to fence in for the simulation, Master Arm will be set to sim. This is not optional. You have to set it to sim, not armed. Uh, GCIs will have the final say. We're not even promising to use this guideline entirely, but this is just the guideline of how we're going to approach it. We have secret rules as well that right, we're going to be using. Up. But in general, don't get closer to the other side. If you get less than 18 nautical miles range, and somebody calls Fox 3 on you, we will declare you dead. That's the general rule. Um, if you call Fox 2 and it's less than five miles, nautical mi uh, less than five nautical miles from a fleeing target, we'll probably count that as a hit as well. 
And like I said, we have other secret rules that we're going to be using for the simulation. The purpose is not to be super accurate. The purpose is to get into a flow of talking with the GCI, getting familiar with the picture, using proper communications, and getting into a sort of, uh, you know, getting into a groove where you're in combat and everything is flowing well. So if you die during the simulation, um, that's fine, but it means that you probably did something wrong. You probably got way too close, you didn't respect the scenario, that sort of thing. So if you're hit, um, you're going to fly away from the combat and you're going to go below 8,000 feet. Anything below 8,000 feet is considered dead. If GCI happens to see you going below 8,000 feet, um, we may just arbitrarily declare you hit a mountain. Um, if you haven't been declared dead before that, anyway. So the way we're going to do this is that the side that fires the missile, that GCI is going to count the other player dead if it looks good on their radar. Okay, so an example might be Craig comes in, calls Fox 3 on a location on somebody that's 15 miles away. And uh, so we're going to be having two GCIs. I'm going to be GCIing on for the blue side. Call sign will be Showtime. Rena will be call sign, will be uh, GCIing on for the red side. Call sign will be Lifeguard. So if you hear Lifeguard speak over guard and say, you know, Viper at Bullseye 265, 14, 13,000 is dead. Then you have to flow out of the fight, go below 8,000 feet. Uh, flow significantly south, maybe, you know, go towards a tanker or something like that, and stay out of the fight and, unless we do another round. So just one thing to be aware of, the SAMs were going to be live during the simulation flight. Yeah. The only purpose of the simulation is just that you won't be shot by other Fox things. So if you're going to fly at the flight, be very careful about crossing um, into enemy territory. Treat the SAMs as if they're a real threat. And they are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't treat them like they're a real threat. They're a real fucking yeah, threat. They will shoot at you, and and they're not no SA two, SA three. They're they're serious Sams on yeah. both sides. Oh, so do we have intel on enemy Sams? So they have like SA elevens and SA seventeens. So if you get launched at, you're probably gonna die. Yes. Yes. In your videos. Yep. So in that case, stay far away. Try to. We're, we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to stay in the ring. That's literally how we're going to fight. We're going to stay in the rings, in our friendly rings. And yeah, we're going to go from there. So if you stay in the rings, we're, it's going to be a defensive. We're not going to go off and try to fight them. Um, They could be... So we have the other flight there. If you click on the other flight right here, they're, they're kind of capping to the west. So we got covering the entire border of North and South Korea. So we got the east side. We'll just set up a, a three-way grinder, and Hol Holiday, you'll be the second element. I'll take uh, Die Diego. Okay. Oh, where'd Rody go? He was here. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. So... I downloaded the INI file. I did not get any threat wing. It's not going to be there. Okay. It's not included. It's only, it's only the lines. Should I download anything? Sorry. Um, no, it's fine. Just follow me. Okay. And, and if you're able to put the threat rings down, put a couple of those down. Yeah, I put them all on the border. Cool. Only a few of them, so I know. Yeah, at least a generalization. You don't have to put all of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll do a grinder. Two ship, two ship, pretty much prom date. We'll do the same thing on the west side. Uh, do a grinder. Mar. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll say 23 miles is Mar. And that could change based on elevation. They're F-15, so they're going to be at 40-something thousand feet going Mach 1. So that 23 Mar might be 30 at that point. Right. So just just be be aware. Do your little checks. You lock someone up, you get their speed, altitude. And yeah, that's it. So you get their speed and altitude at least um, to, to kind of judge how far your MAR needs to go up or down. 
and uh, yeah, the the and, and when you do lock someone up, and they're already cranking or turning cold, there's about a 99% chance they already shot. And if you haven't shot yet, either turn cold and get out of there, or you might as well not even shoot. Uh, might as well have the other element come back in, and and you don't waste that missile. Um, but, but yeah, so that's a little bit of tactics for, for BVR here. Make sure you use your, your mode four. It shouldn't be any separation because no, none of us should be north. Shouldn't be any confusion when it comes to IFF in certain directions. Um, but do remember which way is north and which way is south. If you're facing south and you see a contact, do not shoot at it. Because if because you could be facing south and you see like one of these or one of these and you you shoot our AWACS or you shoot our uh, our tanker there, so if you're facing south, there's pretty good chance it's 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 friendly and you just do a mode four real quick. If you're facing north, there's a better chance that it's enemy, but it might be the the hot leg um, the hot leg element. So just be cognizant of that and and use your TGP to your advantage because it could see a lot farther in three six now. Uh, oh yeah, so the, the bullseye. Make sure you get the bullseye, your little internal mental picture of the bullseye. So here what I do, this is our responsibility over here. So I go all the way to the end of the of the peninsula. That is uh, 121 miles. So you can cut that in half, 60 is in the middle. So that's boom, easy. And the that should be like over here. So 115 miles... Uh, 68, 115. That'll be the, the bullseye of the very end coast. So you put it in half, 60 is about in the middle. All we, all we have to worry about is north all the way, not even to 90, like to 70. So in that range is what you need to worry about. Yes. So yeah, stay with your lead or your wingman. You should be okay. If, if, if your wingman turns off cold and your head's down in the MFD trying to lock something up, you need to turn cold with them. Don't continue continue hot because you'll get shot down. My bad, guys. I had my goddamn mic muted. I was talking the whole time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well. We can tell this is going to go great. Yep. <laughs> uh, hot mic. Um, hey, Prime, right above the alternate field, is, is that our tanker or one of them? Yes, right, right. Let me grab something. Right here, yeah. The tanker okay. is it's right, right about here. Okay. So if you right. click, if you click on the airy fuel flight, you'll see the flight path. So you can put a line there if you if you want. Oh, there we go. Okay. Mustang two, Osan Tower, way one four zero at zero knots, runway zero nine arrived. You're cleared for takeoff. Clear takeoff zero nine right, Mustang two one. We're gonna line up uh, in elements. So the second element stays holding short until we're uh, on the move here, and it'll be five second intervals for uh, takeoff within the element. Three, two. Then two, just let me know when you're set, kind of like at a 45 degree angle off my right side. And running it up, and one is rolling. Two is rolling. Three, take an active. Right now, uh, whenever you get a chance, set uh, IDM to Victor. If you don't know how to do that, just let me know. One second. Set IDM to Victor. Add a link. 
password. Two, how do I do that? So you press uh, list and then enter. And you should be on air to ground data link. Let me know if you're there. I am. And you would dauber right and you'll uh, switch it to intra flight. Let me know when you're there. I am. Now the cursor should be in the top ish right part of the uh, DED. Com should say UHF. Press any any number but zero to switch it to VHF. Two done. And then this reset uh, dauber left, and you should be good. Showtime Mustang two one flight of four. Airborne, 14,000, Bullseye, 134-61. Mustang, showtime. I have you at that location, 130-61, 15,000. Reference, steer point three. Make a one to showtime. Uh, copy and confirm. Mako Showtime, have you at uh, Alpha Check 14563, 6000 climbing. Mako 1 to Showtime, uh, copy that, confirm. Current bullseye 144 for 063. Mako 1. 144 for 62. Uh, 2, uh, look on your. FCR page on the left side there should be a button or a, a indication it has M plus press that OSB until it says M4 Two set on mode four. Copy so that does so instead of searching all the modes it only searched mode 4 And then uh, everybody else don't worry about it. if you uh, go ahead and set your modes for a uh, player versus player mode. If you know what I mean, go ahead and do that. I don't know what that means. Yeah, it's turning off the, the modes in your IFF. The switch? Uh, you press IFF, and then you should have mode 1, 2, 3, 4, and all that stuff. So if you, the whatever number you press, so if you want to turn off mode 4, it should be highlighted. You press 1, press enter, it turns off mode 4. Correction, mode 1. And what that does is, is uh, if someone um, in interrogates you as mode 1, you won't reply. So in a player versus player sense, if they're searching for mode 1, you will come up as yellow and they know where you are. Running mode four and mode two. Uh, technically just mode four in this sense. And then, if you press uh seven, so seven enter, seven enter, you'll get the audio. So if anybody has a bad mode four, you'll get a tone. That means that the enemy's uh searching for interrogations and stuff. All right, flight referencing uh, steer six, coming right. Three, settled your left. Visual. Set up the classic grinder here uh, between elements, say about maybe 10 miles or so. Doesn't have to be exact. Um, uh, in a little bit, I want second element to do an orbit. And flight going simulated fence in. So remember, going to sim. One is sim fence in ten point seven. Two is 
same fence den, 10.6. Three, same fence den, 10.1. Four, fence den, 10.4. Uh, element, uh, second element, go ahead and orbit. Or spin. Three. Alright, so two, um, are you familiar with uh, check turns? No. So a check turn is simply for, for example, if I were to say uh, check turn 360, which is north, that means we would both turn to 360 at the same time. So, y so you wouldn't follow me, you would just, we would both turn no, simultaneously. to go uh, two mile trail. So instead of slowing down, you could like offset by 45 degrees. Uh, left or right in this case, so you don't want to go, you don't want to go left. So go f offset 45 degrees to the right, and then you'll slowly start to uh, increase uh, distance. Again, how many miles trail? Two. All blue players, all blue players, showtime. Uh, requesting from flight leads, are you ready for the simulation phase? Mustang ready. Make a one ready. Showtime copies blue ready. Uh, stand by, we're waiting on red. They need uh, a couple minutes. One three speed. Three one eight. And referencing uh, steer seven. Three. Four. We got a SA ten over there. So SA ten, if it goes in the inner ring. You need to defend and flow in the opposite direction. Uh, three cap around steer point six. We will cap around steer point seven. A firm, ca uh, cap north south at steer six. Three, copies off. Make a show so. time. Uh, we still haven't begun yet, but we do have an incursion. Bullseye 073 48 15,000. Uh, bogey, I believe it's probably neutral, but we don't have an ID yet.
All right, so now uh, two, I, I probably will not be calling my turns. You'll just have to follow me. Showtime to all players. Showtime to all players. Fights on. Mustang fights on. Make a one fights on. Data. All right, uh, three, continue north. We're going to uh, spin to the south so we can get some better spacing. But three, continue north, cap around, steer six. Three. Bad data. Four, two, six. Say again, two. No joy on your data. I haven't sent any data yet. Talking about... Uh, uh, data link? Showtime to all players, reminder. Yes. Uh, this is the simulation phase. No live fire. Yeah, two, I haven't sent any Make data yet. Copy. So right now, two, I'm just spacing us uh, a little bit more space up the flot to give us some more space, but I'm having two to continue over there and kind of give us a, a behind-the-scenes look. Picture, single group. Bullseye 063 96 23,000. Track south. Group is three ship heavy. That's Prince us. Eagle. That's in our lane. Two, that's, uh, that's friendly. Remember, simulated and try not to push the pickle button. element hot. Four, go gate. Flight music on. Are we still on simulation? Yes. is hot targeted uh lead lead uh contact 23000 lead contact cold Contacts cold. Four, make sure you call your Fox trees on uniform. Copy that. Let's take two on range, twenty five miles. 
Mustang 2 1 off cold. I'm jamming targets there, un unable to get uh, altitude. Three, come back hot. Three. Element 2 turning hot. Seems like there's uh, two two waves or two uh, rows of enemies. The first one is jamming pretty hard. Showtime, make a one, uh, declare zero seven zero for eight one angel seventeen. Zero seven zero eighty one sixteen thousand hostile print eagle. Make a one. One's turning hot. Lead target cold, trail target hot. To monitor this guy. If he turns hot, let me know and, and simulate Fox. Mustang 2 1, simulate Fox 3, Bullseye 0 2 3, 96, 28,000. Showtime copy shot 0 7 4, 96, 28,000. Cranking right. One off cold, two follow. Turning hot. Data. Three is spinning. Four try to regroup. Four. Good data. Two groups. Bullseye 08776. Showtime to make a one declare. 067 for 89. Angel 24. Zero six seven. Uh, correction. Zero six seven eighty nine twenty one thousand hostile. Make a one cup. Two monitor. 
Make a one range, 20. Make a one, box three, 0694. Two, that's eight out. Oh, the friendly's green. Four, go hot. Cypher at 08082, dead. Four, got the Going cold. Three, going cold. Make a one three, Fox three, seven nine, zero eight zero. Uh, Fox three, two six seven nine one. Showtime Mustang 2 1 request altitude of uh, Metallica Bullseye 06392. 06392 is at 21,000 maneuvering last. He's only 16. To uh, target close group leader, I have trail. Three copy, uh, picking up okay, the, uh... Two one. that group is now flowing south. Copy that, you got trip. He's coming in hot. Three, there's a follow-on group 40 miles behind your group. Copy, I see him. One's cold. One, I'm committing on target 06580. Mustang 23, Fox 3, uh, 077 for 88. Uh, 2 negative, you're getting close to the. Uh, if you have a shot, go for it, but if you're getting really close to the border. 2 going cold. 3 going cold. 4 reset. Copy that. Data. One's turning back. Two, go ahead and delay that turn. Just get in back behind me. We'll help uh, D Louse three. One call. Mustang two four range thirty miles. Show time to make a one. Uh, declare zero six nine for eight six. Angels. Yeah, I can't even read it. Twelve. Zero eight zero three nine. Dead. Come back to one three. Copy. One is hot. Uh, group Metallica Bullseye 073, Fox 37283. Fox 3, uh, 072 for 88, Angels 24. Uh, Mako 1, Showtime, I believe you've lost two aircraft in the simulation so far. Copy Joker. Uh, make a one one uh, lifeguard. Make a one one. Uh, just to confirm, uh, did make a one one get hit on your last uh, call? One's cold. Uh, Mako Showtime, I can confirm that was uh, a Mako one hit. So uh, the first pass and the second pass, you took uh, one hit each on your flight. I'm going to need to Okay, Mako one one. Copy. So two, just continue hot. And just look. Uh -huh. Yeah, continue hot and look for targets of opportunity. Showtime, Eastern Group, Eastern Arm Maneuvering, Bullseye 063, 18,000, moving hot. Leaning on Mustang uh, 2. 
Heard that too? Yes. So see if you can find him. Find the hot and closest guy. If you're unsure, don't be afraid to turn back around. Nine. Stepped on. Say again, three, if talked. Mustang 2-2, two, two, truck 3, 084, 109. Two going hold. Okay, three started left, four you start right. Copy that. Mustang 2 2, showtime copy shot. Four go gate. Okay, I'm at two, you see, Lawson. Come back. Four go gate. Contact 085107 dead. For well, that target, Stone Cold. Uh, two, I think that's you. Uh, Mustang 2 2 should have, that would be you. Am I dead? Yep. Mustang 2 3, Fox 3, 074 97 27,000. Three. Uh, target contact, both, uh, Zero six four eight seven twenty four. Flight when able, safe fuel. Two three point seven. Three six point seven. Four four point eight. Three going cold. Mustang has lowest three point seven for fuel. Well, uh, terminate terminate. Showtime calling kill at uh, 07698, 23,000. Uh, Mustang, uh, understand you copy, calling uh, terminate? A firm, terminate. Showtime to all players, showtime to all players, uh, knock it off. Uh, all flights, reassess your flight uh, fuel levels and uh, let your GCI know if you need to refuel. Four Joker. Make a one, knock it off, terminate. Music off. A firm. Fence, uh, fence out. Two bingo. A uh, two reference. Everyone reference steer 10. Steer 10. Correction. Steer 1-1. Mustang flights heading to alternate steer 11 to refuel on the ground. Mustang showtime copy refuel. And flight uh, rejoin. Two, uh, what's my speed? Can you, uh, so, uh what's my speed? Two, two, ninety. Hey, firm. Make a showtime copy refuel. Package. We will use this frequency for uh, for the tower. So don't go to three, tower. We'll do, three, you will use this for for a uh, un un tower or a towerless landing. Make 
Echo One, copy. Rejoin the uh, AI seat. Okay, bro. Might be fuel, because fuel's out of your tanks. It might be a stores thing. So just check your, your uh, warning panel. Might have to move your head a little bit. It might be stores. Your category. The, the bottom of the left panel, because of my leg. Can't get that far. Go ahead and switch your category and see if it goes away. Flight, go left echelon. Three. Four. Two. We're going to fly over the runway. Seems like it's uh, maybe heading one six or so. We'll do a, a right hand pattern to come into land. Mako Mustang, we're going to be doing an overhead break over the runway. Right now we are 21 miles to the north, inbound for what it seems like runway 16. You should be number two in the left echelon. Heading Altitude. now, uh, Altitude. two one zero. Runway is eleven o'clock. Two zero. Okay, bring it back for boards up. Two three is close to your left below you.
So in this break, wait about five seconds and, and follow the person in front of you. That, that should help really good so we can uh, get on this runway. Seems like the runway is uh, one, eh, about 170 or so. One say again, how many seconds? Uh, no less than five. So five seconds. Mustang approaching brake at the alternate right brake for runway 18 right. Mustang one in the break. Mustang two in the break. Mustang three in the break. One landing, Mustang 1-1 one, one landing gear down, right uh, base, runway 1-8 right. Exit to the left, or to correction to the right of the runway. So go all the way to the end to exit right. So, uh, sit rep, we are never flying Make the F-15. Make sure that, uh, you set the, um, alternate gear thing. It'll punch the hydraulics down. Oh, fuck. Yep, yeah, I, tr uh, I tried that too, nothing. Oh, uh, this thing is really wobbly. Uh, you have three down. Three gears are down. He missed the. Oh! Ooh. Oh no! Oh! Spinny, spinny, spinny. Explodey, explodey, explodey. No, he has ice skates. Do you... uh, that def that defies oh, you. He's on fire! <laughs> lead. It lead, you're on fire. <laughs> Sir, I don't think you have it, Prom. <laughs> I don't think you have it. Uh, there zero, you go. zero, zero, zero! <laughs> Uh, the American judge gives him a 9-9, but the Russian judge gives him an 8-2. Oh. <laughs> Very well done. Just wanted to put a little show on there. Let's go. Yeah, you That's came in a little too quick.
I had a mean bounce because I know you got to get the nose down. I was like, okay, screw that up. Oh well. Who was that against? Uh, it would have been old Craig because I would have uh, been the first to go. Yeah. Well, that's we still one one KD ratio. We had we had issues uh, to we had calm issues. Uh, oh yeah. We so, had issues. Yeah, so. if you're on red side, just know that your frequency might be like fifty five point eight, and that fucked with all of our brains. Like we were oh, yeah. all so confused. Like this doesn't. I've never seen a comms frequency this low. Well, not, not only that, also. not not only that, but our preset. We we would all be on the same preset, and there'd be three different frequencies. And we all did click dance, so um, I'm iffy about red side. Also, um, this goes to Bible Clinger and Prime. We're never flying the F-15s again. They're done. Cool experiment. Red will never fly them again. You can't do more yep. than three Gs. Three fucking Gs. I did a split S where I started at 25. I don't think I came out to like maybe 16 to 12,000 feet. Were you on Cat Three? Yeah, but I switched to Cat One, and it was no better. But even Here, then, here's cat... a conundrum for you guys. I, I have one for you. Um, when we were going in for the landing, not like no no aspects of my jet change, maybe other than weight from fuel. I go from uh, I get a caution warning on on the final approach, and it's uh, for stores config. Uh, yeah. That was probably because you hit 13,000 pounds of gas, if I had to guess. Yeah, so stores config would mean you got to switch to Cat 1. Right. Which, you can stay in Cat 3, it's just your jet is now capable of giving you all of the Gs that you want. Yeah, I was about at that, like, 15 to 14, maybe 13 to 15,000 pounds of fuel. Yeah, so, that's, the, yeah. that's the Cat 1 area. Interesting. Which which also broke my brain when I'm trying to land without a nose gear, right? So, <laughs> yeah, so, it, so that's uh, why I guess the server crashed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I see that. I got my, my thing, though. But copy on the F-15s. Because yeah. um, well, it was nice to have uh, mode 4 for Red 4. Um, yeah. Because... I don't know. I, I want a lot of changes, but the aggressors don't have mode four, and you can't put a sniper pod, and you can't put bombs on. It. It's like really weird. Um, but copy on the F-15s. Yeah, it it was fun. Back to C thirties. Honestly, no. Can wait. Can, well, can Bible? You and I can have a conversation. Can we modify C thirties to have one twenties? Uh, you got to make a new theater for that. Yeah, and everybody has to download it. Mm. Let's okay. do it. Let's call it Red Flag. Nellis. Oh yeah, Re Korea Red Flag. All right. So let's let's get this. Let's get this. I think, I think I think Prime wants to move on. Yeah, we need <laughs> we need to get we we actually finished early, so let's try to get this in here. All right. So this is the first engagement. Um, we're doing our grinder over here. Uh, I don't know if you guys have read noticed there was a huge Patriot over here. Oh yeah, we did. Um, so that that was the thing. I wanted to remove it, but I guess it's it's. I wasn't able to remove it, so it had to stay there. But sure, sure, you wanted to remove it. Well, sure. afterwards, did, did you guys <laughs> did you guys on Red understand uh, the lowdown call from Lifeguard? Yes. Yeah, her very first call she made to us with yeah, she gave us the um, she gave us the location of the Patriot. Yeah, we were gonna tell you about it, and I said no, 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 don't tell. Her. I said let's do it as a lowdown call instead. So I pass that on to to Lifeguard. Yeah. It. Let's. I'll remind me to talk about that later when we make the call. But yes. All right. That was very good. Actually, Rue did a fantastic job. She's yeah, great. She, and she's actually, not. She's not here. So. She's great. not here. <laughs> no, oh. she had to go. Oh, okay. No, well, she was went on later than than she intended. She was fantastic. She's a good GCI. All right. So here we are, four ship, going into the going into the battle, simulated battle. So I have my number. Uh, two, my three and four spin to get a distance between us. So they spin, and now we're we're set up for we're not holding hands with each other. So we're we're set up tactically, uh, distance wise. So we're we basically was orbiting around. I think this was seven or six. We were orbiting around this steer point, and they were orbiting around this one. So I initiated that early, so we wouldn't be orbiting around the same thing. 
but they were getting they were looking at these guys, which I wasn't aware that was C one thirties in here, but uh, <laughs> uh, well, twelve C one thirties. Yeah, yeah a lot. There were, there were the Bible said that Craig, you can frag C one thirties. So I was like, said oh, also it. don't send them to die, and you send them right into the sands. Into... <laughs> were there sams there? Yeah, that's well, they're they're on the edge. They're on the Flight edge. Intel was not the best. We did. That's fine. Yeah. So uh, you send them into the DMZ and go. There's Sam's. Is what? <laughs> uh, Howard, they kind of kind of walk me through what you're going on here. I see you're in a, a really nice line of breast here. It's actually really wonderful. Yeah. So uh, what happened was I saw on the HSD that four was uh, locking one of those guys. It was just a happenstance on a data sweep. Yep. Uh, so we uh, committed on them. I told him to sort the left guy. At this point, it was my understanding that there was two of them. Now I see that there was three of them. Actually, no, I saw that trail. Yeah, it looked like they were line of breast and attacked me not too long ago. But we close on them. Uh, I engage my guy. When I turn there, I've already called uh, my Fox 3. Um, I think I was uh, just having a brain fart. That's why it took me so long. I've never done it before with the like the simulation fight like this. Yeah, I thought it's it was different. set up really well, by the way. But um, I call my shot, and then I turn off to... Uh, a crank, and then I'm in my crank, and I realize that it's uh, I'm way too close, so I just uh, pull a max G turn uh, back out. Yep, and I think four does the same, he's coming cold. Yep, and then we uh, reset. So, w one second, what was what was this, Brody? I did uh, call out a Fox three, but I called it out on a Victor. Oh, so is that why you went uh, banked and then came back around? Like, what were you? What was going on? Yeah, I was, if you uh, remember, I called it out, and uh, Reed told me uh, I have to call it out on uniform. And yeah. So, so I'm, I'm asking. So, is that, is that why you you went sixty degrees to the left and came back to the right? Yeah, that's because I, I want to make sure the uh, the bullseye call. Okay, that's I guess that's fair. All right, I, I was just wondering if if you had a, a a thought to like recommit or something. And I'm like, that's probably not a good idea. Uh, being being that close. So here's the grinder. So as there, did someone say something? Uh, so here's the grinder. So they're they're cold now. And in the meantime, we were getting spacing and coming back hot. So I hear them say, uh, three's cold. I immediately assess the situation, and usually it's about the time to turn back hot. So they're, once they're cold, I turn hot. So I turn a little early here because I'm, I'm, how far am I? Like 22 miles. So that's a pretty good distance to start turning hot. And at this point, I am, I, I'm looking over here, make sure there's nothing over here. And then I snap over here, and I'm, I'm monitoring these three targets right here. And then I, I hear the fox, and as they turn, I'm giving two, I'm, I'm giving three updates of them. I'm saying the lead target's turning cold, trail tar target's beaming. So I'm giving them updates because they're, they're cold, they can't see anything. And I'm, I'm just, other, and otherwise, I wouldn't be doing anything anyway, so I'm just going to give them short little updates of what's going on with these three bandits. And in a, in a, a real sense, if you're using real missiles, uh, I could use my TGP to see them visually, and call if there's any splashes or um, any foxes, because they could still fox if that's the, the case. If they're facing this way, I could still see them. And also, if there's any, you could see splashes from the radar as well. If someone's uh, spiraling or quickly descending, so they're like 10,000 feet, and every second they're losing 1,000 feet or so, a good indication that they're dead. So you can also call them like possible splash, lead target, trail target, or whatever. So I'm giving them updates as they're cold. Uh, could you hover on the two cold and then one beam and see who the, who's actually doing that? Mailman's That's beaming. That's mailman. And... and then old Craig, four. I think that was... That's four. Okay. Four decided to stay with lead despite all my calls to him, so... Okay. I've all had right. a problem too, Gump. Yep. Cool. I'm just curious. Press. So I... Uh, I was a little... This is the... the uh line so i was getting kind of close and i was seeing i was getting nails 
uh, 27, but I wasn't seeing anything. It was just jamming everywhere. I couldn't, I couldn't get a lock. So I, number one, I wasn't sure of his altitude. Number two, I wasn't sure of the distance. And number three, I had very low SA, so I just turned off. I, I had no idea what was going on. I did not get a lock at all with this, uh, this, 20, this 15 there. But I turned cold, so I'm still within this area, so there's, there's no harm in turning cold because I can't see anything. And I turn cold. That's when the second element turns back hot. I think that saved you because I, I quit you and then I switched to the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm getting uh, strobers at this point. <clears throat> so we switch roles here. I guess that's the fox there. I see him cranking a little bit. Both cranking. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. They, so I they, definitely foxed. They both fox at 23 yep. miles. It's a dangerous missile. I'm based off of this. So, uh, because cranking, you have to crank a little bit. So being that Howard they didn't crank, it's all simulated, so it doesn't really truly matter. But I see Gump cranked, simulated cranked. So his might have might have actually tracked more than Howard days in that in this particular situation. I kept him in the uh, on the edge of the FCR there. Yeah. And I did not get a kill kill call on that guy. Yep. That, so I turned end up turning cold. Yep. Turned cold twenty five miles. So uh, how are they kind of run through this engagement right here? So you turned turned hot after I was cold. I wasn't sure. I think for this one, I expect you to be uh, hot for a little bit longer. Um, honestly, I didn't want to turn back hot this close, but obviously I'm going to keep the coverage, and on the distance was good enough. Uh, the comms were good, so my SA was uh, decent enough that I felt comfortable enough to turn hot. Uh, saw that guy had... Uh, for target the trail, um, and then I just engaged. I saw him getting close to the mar, uh, so I decided to just um, cheap shot uh, that fox. Yep. Uh, so he at least couldn't chase me away. So or interesting, chase me down. Uh, interesting point of order. I did not ever in this flight at all get um, spike sixteen. Interesting. I used the uh, Sam Sam lock. Oh. I used STT a couple times. I don't know if it was you, Gump, but I'd use it a few times. No, I don't. I don't think I anybody ever. I used STT once on uh, one Strober because it kept dropping the lock. Yeah. Uh, I like how everyone was still trying to get a lock. I appreciate that, as opposed to just like chasing yeah. it. And just, yeah, oh, foxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fox, or better yet, turn off and when you're 180, yell that you you fox. Yeah, it's like what? <laughs> and, and as Red Force, what we're trying to do is trying to simulate real combat. In, oh yeah, which is helpful. In the, of the yeah. sim, in the sense of the sim, right? So uh, I'm intentionally STTing um, those that I am intention intending to fox on. Yeah, exactly the way it should be done. But I'm just saying I appreciate it that we didn't have people. Yeah, to we didn't have to explain that. Um, so, oh, Rody, kind of run me through what was going on here. So you have your 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 wingman, just about line abreast. He foxes, and you keep going straight. Uh, kind of go through what was going on with your going on in your head there. Yep, I see him there going. Uh, they were beaming, and I knew they weren't coming in hot. Yeah, you're locked on the you're locked on the these these two or one, but it's the yeah. the hot ones. And then I, uh, I believe I got to Mar, and yeah, this I'm looking guy. at Mar, and I did. I believe this is the first time I call out a uh, Fox Three on uniform, and then turn cold. So you're locked on to someone who's 33. So you lock you Fox at this 33 miles away guy, because that's, yeah, that's you locked a, on to. I had an angle of about 15 degrees nose up. Okay. Launch. Yeah, it'll definitely make them do go defensive. It'll it'll it pull somewhere in here, and it'll possibly make them go defensive. Um. But yeah, w w were you tracking this this guy? You said you you tracking a beam guy, beaming. You tracking this guy? Yeah, I did see him, and I saw which direction he was going. I didn't have it. Uh, SCT. All right. I had a soft lock. All right. All right, you guys turn cold, and now we're hot, and we're seeing these two here. And number two, Real quick. go ahead. I think in the future, 
instead of continuing to pursue that shot, you just either engage the guy that I engaged or go cold with me because after that we got split up pretty far. I think it was like uh, between 8 and 18 miles that we got split up. And yes, I'd rather, I realize that. I'd rather we keep uh, within like a mile or two than to try and get off that other shot because uh, so still keeping in mind the bigger picture. Yep, good point. Because cause it, it could have been... Yeah. It, could have been someone else who's lower. I don't know who. So maybe uh, Lee is like low in the in the weeds doing stuff, and he comes up and hits you. So, um, yeah. So that's a good point. To if 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 you don't have a sh immediate shot within like the next two and a half seconds, then you should uh, turn off with with your lead there. Gotcha. And then so I got C number two looking at this guy. I, I told him I told him to monitor. So I was, I was checking out things, saw them, saw them, saw a little bit of this, and I, I uh, gave two data to monitor this guy, and uh, the Diego. When I say monitor, what what comes to mind? Like, what did you think? Because I, I know I didn't explain it, but what did you think that I wanted you to do? What what did you expect from me? From from what did you expect from me from you when I said monitor? To tell you when he goes hot on us, one hundred percent. That is exactly what that means. So I, I'm, and and it's your responsibility. So if he goes hot, you have, you have a uh, the clear, you have the green light to fire if he goes hot, because I'm unable to monitor these two groups at the same time. And I'm I'm going to give you this guy, and I'm going to take the highest threat because I'm I'm in front. I'm two miles or whatever in front of you, and I have the highest SA at that point. So I just tell you to monitor this guy, and I'll I'll take care of these two. I believe I box there. Because I, I knew you guys were cold. I, Yeah, I box and that's me cranking there. Yeah, and they, they both see exactly. Perfect. See, I, they both went cold. And, uh, yeah, so now we're, we reset. And, uh, kind of go through what was going on in, in your mind, Diego, here. So I, we turn hot. Uh, you're behind me, and kind of run through what was going on in your mind during this engagement. I was um, basically monitoring his aspect to know when he goes hot. Uh, I don't know if it was right there when you turned, and I said I was uh, targeting, and I said a bullseye, I believe. Yeah. And then you said no go cold so i started following you mm -hmm. um but i'm not aware if it was this time on another leg of our bar cap yeah uh generally speaking whenever i was monitoring any target you've given me or the airspace in general i i notice i first of all i don't see their height their altitude and and then i don't see their speed but i do do that when I'm trying to pinpoint where you are to rejoin the formation. So I mean, I, I mean, last Tuesday I wasn't able to do the, the latter. Now I can at least figure out your altitude from the FCR, which is something I, I didn't look at before. Hell, before I, it was such a, a overwhelming amount of numbers below the con. I didn't know if it was the number. That's uh, of the planes in my flight was targeting that particular contact, or if it was a return on the IDM or what. I didn't even know what the number was at the moment. Obviously, with time, I could figure it out, but not under pressure. So, to answer your question concretely, I was just looking at their aspect, and if they were hot, I was then looking at the DL set to know if I had a shot. Yes. Yep. So that's good. You you did all of that, and and the uh, you're talking about the IDM, and and you know what it means now. Like if if there's if I'm locked onto someone, it'll when it goes through the cycle, it'll have a, a one symbol over it, meaning that I'm I'm targeted onto that. Yes, I used to confuse that with the below number. So you okay. know how in the IDM you 
type in 11, 12, it means two digit numbers instead of one digit number. Yes. So whenever I saw that, whenever I saw that in the FCR, I thought the airplane was targeting that target and not that that was an IDM return. I don't know if I'm explaining myself. I you thought that was one of your uh, your your uh, friendlies over there. I thought no, I thought it was not a friendly. I thought that was my friendly targeting him, because I couldn't I couldn't uh, differentiate between the number on the top of the FCR radar contact and the numbers below, when it had a return of the IDM. So when it's a return, you get a instead of it being a white symbol it is a yellow symbol yes like a like like a box with a with a tower on top of it i don't know yeah and uh and, and below it is the 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 i i mean that below is the the item return like two one or two two or two three or two four but the number when you are targeting that particular contact is on top of it instead of below right? yeah so yep so yeah, a method that I use is um, I'll monitor HSD FCR at the same time, right? And then um, I know where my guys are, so um, I'll slew the cursor over my guys, and then I'll kind of slew it up to where the enemy is, and I'll make sure I differentiate it between the two. I think that's the situation that uh, he's dealing with. Yeah. I understand. We we can we can talk about that offline. We want to continue the the debrief here. We got a lot to talk about, but I I I get the confusion. I really thought of it, but yeah, the top and bottom for the IDM. All right, prom yeah. date. You remember this uh, engagement right here? I think it was after you were locking up some C one thirties there. Oh yeah, yeah. I was just looking at mine too, trying to get a grasp of what's going on. All right, here. Let's take a look. <clears throat> All right, let's see where we're at here. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead and play. Um, yeah, at this point, I had a uh, Bono as my number two. Uh, Juddy was the three. He is a uh, five mile spacing in trail, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll let it play out. See if I can keep up. I had issues with the uh, data link with my number two. Uh, he kept disappearing, and I had to uh, keep jumping him back in. But I had three, but number two was uh, yeah, it's just. Couldn't get him on the uh, intra flight too much, but yeah, here let's turn turn around. Okay, yeah, so we reset here. Is is, is he kind of acting as your second second uh, element? Yeah, like the uh, the the uh, grinder. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, we did the declare <clears throat> a confirmation on the fifteen. Yeah, keep letting it go here. Keep letting it go. I know I'm sending Ooh, it. Close. Super close. Yeah, I'm sending data. Yeah, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, so that was my probably only Fox 3 there on that one right, here. Right here? Yeah, I'm sending data to 2. I can't see him on the uh, the freaking intra flight. I know 3's over there doing his thing. He's getting call outs. I saw the other guys going cold in this dude here. And then, yeah, we started... Uh, uh, which I'm gonna call it. Um, I can't even think of the word right now. I was wondering if any SA tens fired. I was watching you guys and your chevrons oh. deep in our fucking zone. Oh, okay, so that's what had. That's what happened. That's okay. Cool. Because no. yeah, we. Yep. I for all right for me personally, I didn't see or if they were there, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see any or hear any uh tens on the uh, RWR. So yeah, they snuck through. Definitely, Bono. Uh, did you? Hear or see anything on the RWR? No, uh, no I didn't hear anything. The S- I just so, so well, with to... an, yeah, SA10, you don't ever hear or see anything. Uh, well, C is not fair. You'll see a 10 on the inner RWR ring. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's it's not, it'll, it'll, it'll 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 chirp exactly. very very briefly, and really? then you're dead. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it'll yeah, think, it'll yeah, spike you. That. Mud, mud 10. Yeah, SA10s are brutal. And and plus, yeah, did you have jammer on? Pretty sure you did. It has home on jamming too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it probably yep. just launched and just was like, "Hey, look, shiny!" and it just hit you. That's it too. So yeah, the Mar. I remember I was sending data. Mar crept up real 
quick intro uh whatchamacallit i did, couldn't see two i saw three i knew he's behind yeah. the trail got one fox three off and i know we started cranking off to the right because the mar was starting to close in on us and then we were starting hey. to reset i think we we're heading back to like steer seven or so around here and um yeah at this point maybe a few seconds after this that's when uh two uh typed in the chat that he got hit because yeah we had no clue i still couldn't even see him on the freaking data link mm. Yeah, and, I said uh, I said I lost visual, and then I just got hit by a Sam like right after. Yeah, and then I remember three called out. Hey, you know, I saw something blow up. Something's pretty crispy. That was right, right in front of him. It was like, bloop! Just the hand of of SA10, just three miles away, three and a half miles away. Just boom! Like, uh, yep. what? <laughs> How fast are these going? Two point three. Yeah. Yeah, a little, little, little quick. A little and quick there. then. I think I reset, turned back around, we lost three, and then I think I got a little sloppy. I I believe, I'm not sure. I know uh, Bible was our GCI, but I'm pretty sure uh, Ruina called out my current bullseye. Oh, yeah. As as killed, and then I'm trying to process it, and then I had already foxed, which is way too late because I remember the rules. I think we were well, probably like maybe 20, 19 miles inside the mar, crept up real quick, and then uh, pretty soon here, I should be diving back down to 8,000 feet heading home. I got kind of fused. I had to make a call out to the GCIs just to confirm that I got killed, and then I remember Bible saying, actually, two of us are dead. Now, I think that was right before you got hit. Um, or no, no. Yeah, it was. Probably, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, right before you got hit. So I dropped my ass back down, you know, slowly 8,000 and started heading out there, and I think... Uh, I think that was the uh, Terminate-ish. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it went by pretty pretty quick. Meanwhile, in Mustang land, let's see it about there. So we're monitoring. We get close to the northern border, so we turn back. Oh, this is when, uh, Diego, this is when you said you had someone targeted. Yeah. You're saying, I got someone targeted, something, something, bullseye, and I'm like, you need to turn back now. Cause, cause you were you were oh pre you were pretty God. pretty close to to some You're... stuff. The SA six. Yeah, those are all SA six. Yeah, so like, you need to turn back. Like I, I I didn't know where you were, but I know you kept going as I was turning cold, and that it spanned maybe fifteen seconds. And fifteen seconds at three hundred knots is something something miles. So, um, yeah, I had you turn back cold. Prom date, and then we're doing we're doing their their thing over here. And uh, let's see where go. Oh. Okay, our day. So prom date uh, had his little had his fun there while we were trying to organize. And I started seeing texts of like I got shot, I got hit. I'm like, oh goodness. And I I reset. Well, I turned back uh, hot earlier because I knew uh, number two was really really close to the to the flood area. So I turned back a little early and I, and I knew they were in trouble here. And I knew that Howard Day, my second element was kind of far back, so they couldn't really do anything and because they had friendlies in front of them. So they're almost useless when it comes to ordnance. So I turned back hot early just because of those reasons. And I had my number 2 delay so he can get behind me. So we kind of had a, a mini grinder but within our element there. Now I'm looking around. I, I do some mode four. I see green over here and no no green over here. Look at my TGP and I see an F15. And uh, I'm just monitoring him. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, he, he he comes back. He goes cold. And I go cold as well. And then my number two is is on hot with these two hot bandits here. And he turns cold at a reasonable amount of time. I don't know where that missile went. I lost it. Yeah. And then uh, this is in trouble. It's a wall. So here is our second element here is four F-15s there. Mailman, Old Craig, Gump. And and I I started to, to turn off cold to the right to get some spacing between us two. I didn't want to go left because I knew that's where they were. I don't want to get closer and closer together. Now we're a single four ship. But I, I was pur purposely going to the right so I can get that spacing between us. Yeah, I, I didn't think about that. The reason I went, I started doing my turns to the right was because four was on my left. That was it. That makes sense. Makes sense.
Here's a it's like a fox call ish. Yeah, fox at twenty twenty two miles, twenty one miles. Yeah, How fast are they there's... going? So roughly the same altitude, roughly the same speed. So nice. Both fox, both go cold. I don't know if if it was a kill or not. But that's a pretty good uh, stalemate there. A, that'd have been a straight trade. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's pretty close. I don't know. Might have been three misses. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was that was it. Yeah. That, then we failed bad at tanking. Oh the jet's yeah. Not, the jet's not capable. Not what I want. I'm gonna go back. Uh, so that ends basically the 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 official part of the briefing. I'm gonna go over red if you guys want to stay, but blue was what uh we were going after here. We I was so tumbleweed as a fight lead. I'd like to forget it. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. I uh my my first engagement, I I shot somebody down, and then uh my head went bonkers. I don't know what happened. I lost my all navigation in, information on my HUD. And uh, I had to do navigation via my helmet, you know. Yeah. And uh, so after that, every time I got engaged, I just, you know, locked me up and practice. I didn't even try to do anything. Ah. And uh, offensive wise, and uh, and uh, and then the, you know, like I said, we had VHF issues. We got them sorted out, but we we're we we're all in the same preset, and we had three different frequencies. It was weird. That's crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, and we all click dance, so. Yeah. There's some weird shit going on that we don't understand. We figured it out, so it's not a big, yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and and we were only three, so like I was kind of I was trying to bounce between backing up two and three at different times so we could never really get a really good grinder going on. Right. Yeah. And right. and having eight of you guys like knowing you guys some of you guys are offset to my right by forty five degrees and I'm trying to fight the guys in front of me. Yep. Uh, for me, it was an overwhelming situation where I just I'm not current enough in fighting to um, to really be able to tell these guys this is what I need you to do and then be able to baby them not baby but be uh, able to do flight lead shit and yeah. make sure everybody's doing what they're doing. Yeah, r well, but, but, but part of that was the v the VHF problems. I mean, well, but yeah. right when we get, right when we got them you know, immediately after we got them sorted, boom, fights on. You know, and we're just, our heads still helmet fired trying to figure out this stupid radio, you know? Yeah, I know. And, it's uh, like, I, I called the Rue. It's like, uh, hey, we need about 120 seconds. And like 40 <laughs> seconds later, we hear Bible come on the radio. It's like, uh, fight's on. And I'm like, okay, we're okay. doing this. All right. That's my life now. <laughs> okay. yeah. sure, I thought she said you were ready, but maybe she took your 120 as literal. No, I literally wanted two minutes. Like, I wanted 120 seconds to just uh, get a couple things confirmed, and then we're like, fights on, and I'm just like, okay, fuck it. You know what? We're okay. going to... I gonna understand go. that you we'll were ready. The best, best of it, yep. Okay. My understanding was that you were actually ready. You're good. Well, and it might have actually been two minutes. It just felt like 40 seconds, because I was just... I was flustered is the correct phrase. You know, I don't know. I felt great. I felt like I had my head on my shoulders. No, you did great. No, no, no. You two did I'm awesome. Just, I'm like, messing with you, dude. No, I'm like, you two were awesome. Like, fucking three was like, uh, do you want me to spin? And I'm like, oh, my God, that's the perfect like, thing. Perfect. Yes, you're, please, you're, spin. You're reading my mind. <laughs> I, my mind doesn't even think about that. Please just do it. <laughs> yeah, and then the first, the first, uh, first time I went cold, you know, I had the same thing uh, Craig did. You know, I'm, I'm up at, I don't know, 24 angels or something. Okay, I'm just going to do a, you know, usual, just do a split S and uh, to go cold. And I'm, I'm going to hit the ground. Oh, <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I was fucking, I was about to break my joystick pulling back. I'm like, please, yeah. please, please, please uh, don't die. This is going to be really embarrassing and I will get a call sign out of it. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> it was wild. I'm downloading the thing now. I'm going to post it in there. Um, so, yay or nay, what do you guys think of the simulation shots and, and GCI doing criteria? To be honest, fuck it. Give us invulnerability and let us lob missiles at each other. So, so I, I, would, I would say that's valid, but I do enjoy it. I, I do think there's merit 
to doing this. If I feel like I was that red flag. Yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah, if there's, I liked if, there's yeah. if there's work, right? Like we need like obviously it's not for prime time yet, but I think we could get to prime time with this type of this type of uh scenario. Yeah, if everything worked we could have done the simulated thing and then killed each other at the end. Like that would have been nice. I think yeah, it's a, I, part of that I was my fault. It, yeah. the, the way that I built the mission and did things, part of it was my fault. Um even with a template I still didn't do it right. So there were things to take away and to learn from it in terms of mission design and or like the overall event design, I should say, not mission design per se. I think yeah, I enjoy it. I think I think it's a good idea. I, I, I think it'll work. It will work fine. Um, I don't want to do it in an F15 again, though. I, yeah. I think I think <laughs> what what Craig said was is definitely valid. Like putting vulnerability on. If you get hit, you get hit. You flow, and then, but. Is he going I, after I, still, your E3? I, I still think there's merit to doing like a simulated fox because it makes you think of like the timeline. So when I'm foxing, uh, I don't know what we're watching now, but this when is... when I was when I was foxing as Red Flight, I was thinking of like, okay, what's the timeline at this distance of an Amram hitting? You know, like going from you know the, the different stages of its flight. And I'm thinking, okay, I gotta, I could, I gotta crank, and then I gotta stay crank until I think it's about pit bull, and then I'm gonna go cold. So I think there's merit to doing this. I think the easier way to do it is uh, invulnerability and uh, missiles. But I just think it's a lot of work for GCI to try to have to figure all oh, that yeah, out. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a, I think it's a good exercise for them though. Yeah, but I mean, you have a three ship. Let's say all three of us fox. Yeah, you know, that, that's then true. What? Oh well, they do it in real life, so yeah. They run the numbers. Um, actually, I was thinking, if uh, F4 radar ever gets a little more opened up, I could probably like we could probably have a simulated fox shot system in there. You know, um, it'd be nice if he ever opens it up. Not gonna happen. It would be nice, but Tumblr's not doing it. I, yeah, I may have to. You have to prod a little bit. I, mean, a little bit. I want. I know what I want out of it. I what I want is I want to, uh, and I, I hope that they'd be receptive to this because um, it would be nice if you could get some certain interfaces added or different things that you can integrate with it. Um, but whatever. No, I love the, I love the idea. It's just getting Tumblr to open up the code to you is gonna be freaking dick dragging. Yeah, and that, that's the advantage of the invul- invulnerability. Uh, you know, you can, okay, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm still husky. Uh, you know, now I'm pit bull. You can figure all that out easier, obviously. And uh, I, I think the real answer is we need to put some serious test time, Prime Bible and I, into KTT. So the only thing I want KTT to change, like literally everything else is perfect, is the M, the 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 silent U. That is literally the only thing. Everything else is perfect. What is the silent U? So when you instead of an M and a beeping sound for missiles, all you get is a silent U on your RWR. Because okay, that's not cool. But okay. Oh yeah, yeah. And and some people said, oh, it makes you think more about something, something. I'm like, it, like for me personally, like I explained to them, like it's timing, like it's literally giving me a a a timing for me. So it beeps at a, however many seconds. Like I know if, if you heard it 20, 25 beeps and you're not dead yet, you're probably good. Right, exactly. So it, it's a timing thing for me. So and okay. if I don't have it, I'm like blind. Like it's really, really strange. Without the the and it's and it's what's used in in the real mission. So it's like why like in that case, that's literally like a simulation exception. You're simulating a simulator, a simulator. <laughs> so if anybody has any other feedback, uh, please feel free to leave it in the Bravo debrief channel. I believe everyone has can can write to there. So that would be great. Um, Particularly, it's more, more for me in terms of like mission design ideas, what worked, what didn't, you know, things like that. If you if you feel strongly about anything, other than Craig, we already know he's gonna he's gonna rant about it anyway to me later on. Yeah. So so what what red do you guys want? What what works for you? Because I want I want the red team to at least have um, mode four. Yeah, I mean, think of you just do vipers and uh, the signature that shows up for them is uh, twenty nine, I believe. That, yeah. that would work. If, if we could find an aggressive hyper, 
That'd be awesome. So I've I've done that. I've used it. Okay. There, there's no there's no um there's no mode four. You don't have a sniper pod. Um, you need a buddy board. Yeah, you need yeah. a buddy board or a bandit board. Okay. Um, so it's it's all it, we could try it a couple times, but I've used the the aggressors a lot, and and it's um it's good. But sometimes it's it's kind of hard, especially as something like this. It's good to be able to use mode four. Oh, I, I we did. I'd have died without mode four. Trying yeah. to figure out the trying to figure out the C one thirties that are fucking flying around and everything. And next time I, I do I do red, I'll probably do if I get a choice. I'd probably do C thirties. Yeah, cool. I mean, Bible. How hard would it be for us to bastardize KTO and freaking give Su thirties AMRAMs? One it's one? the same thing that we do for the helicopter mod. It's the same process. So why don't we just rebuild the helicopter theater and then also incorporate these F sixteen fixes for training? Yeah, that's iffy. You'd probably want to do separate theaters. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we're doing a lot of database shit. Because um, and when it comes anyway. to the PVP, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm off. Okay, um, I gotta take off. But thanks a lot, guys, for for showing up. I appreciate it. Feedback is welcome. Um, you know, leave it in the debrief channel. And uh, thanks, Prime for uh, and Prom for leading on blue. Thanks, Old Craig, for taking red, and for everybody attending and showing up. Yep. Thanks for hosting it and teaching. Yeah, brother. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hell yeah. And then uh, real quick, so uh, Diego, what is one thing you learned? And then uh, Bono, you'll be next. And then Juddy, you're next. Yeah. What's one thing you um, learn? When I learn I have to. I learn I have to SDT. I still don't do it, but now I see the value in it because I keep losing tracks and uh, and I also don't crank. I just pump. Okay. I gotta crank. Yep. Understandable. Okay. That all. Cool. Oh no. Uh, for me, I just mean learned. Uh... Just overall the stuff with the comms, because before my comms, uh, it could still be better, but I feel like they're I did improve a little bit after this. Indeed, and and this is a like like we always it's an accelerated syllabus. Like usually it would be in stages, but we're just like teaching you like fire hose and then throwing you into it. And and you could always like ping us at uh, at BMS and ask for us to do a one on one. But this is like. It's is a fire hose of information, and um, it's it's it, at least I, I each one each time I want you to learn at least one thing. That's the goal for every single day. But you guys are doing are doing a lot better. Like with from last time, like last time was a complete was craziness, and and, and this was like very very good. It was a lot better. And I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in real quick for uh uh for Bono. Yeah, it real. It got the game plan kind of turned to crap. Like we started off pretty good. I did push this out a little bit far, and it got complacent. And then, of course, the issues with the uh, uh, data link and all that stuff. But um, yeah, everything happened so fast, and trying to send targets and uh, listen to the callouts from the GCI and all that good stuff. And that Mar, which I'm just going to just say mine just real quick, so everybody else can finish. But it it creeps up quick. Like it oh, really yeah, does. Yeah. It, it creeps up quick because when you're trying to send data targets, and then I'm trying to use the uh, the zoom on the FCR, you know, to just determine whether it's a three ship, a two ship. Then the contacts completely disappeared, and then when they reappeared, we're already like 18 miles closure. And then by then, you know what I mean. And then of course it's simulated, so you need to do your call out. So your brain's trying to process that. And the next thing you know, you're 15, 14 miles. And I believe. Um, a call out may have came twice that uh myself and bono were killed before the sa10 even hit them i'm pretty sure i didn't even see a 10 at all on the rwr so whether or not it was sneaky that was pretty awesome but um yeah i'll definitely take the hit as far as lead because we could have stayed over there by our hawks a little bit and reset which i think we did once or twice but i think we turned uh um what's my call committed a little bit too early and kind of got caught up so yeah, like Prime said, he said it perfect. This was pretty accelerated, and things happened really quick. And you know, little mistakes take seconds. And yeah. um, this this is pretty much like a rough draft. You know what I mean? And I I definitely do agree. When we have invulnerability on with missiles, then we can really 
price. Yeah, hey, we uh, can really get I, it in, but yeah, that's it. I do have to agree with you on that one, Prom. What? Because um, on my end, I was sending data, and in my mind, I was number two, and I was sending data to number one, and then I realized I was number four, and I'm sending, I uh, had a repunch of three. Yep. And that's where it got confusing uh, with uh, Prom and uh, Parde. Yeah, yeah. You guys asked uh, yes. who would say, uh, you sent me that, or, and no, I didn't send that. No, it was me. Yeah, and at the same time, you know, you're doing that inattention might set in. But of course, like I said before, you know, we can't really knock ourselves too hard because it's the first time we did this. You know, if we knocked it out, you know, maybe two or three more times to get used to it. But um, yeah, it's a good learning experience. That's why I'm glad we do have you know this to review it. But um, yeah, definitely a couple of things that I just noticed that I'm going to sharpen up on it. It's always good to have a a good game plan. Yep, but, and the and yeah. the, the the Mar, I'm still with 120s. It's it's hard to get them because with um, other jets and AI, it's it's I have a good setup set of Mars for that. But when it comes to human players and 120s on the other side as well, it's hard to get get that Mar. And I, and I believe right. 23 was about about good. We, you, you would you would you were able to get at least maybe an a little bit above an R pi or R opt shot, yep. the, the defensive yep. shot to get out because at 23 miles and all depending on the altitude and speeds. It seems like most of the hot legs, the 15s are going at least Mach one. I think we were maybe Mach point nine. Yeah. On a on the yeah. high end road, he was up there pretty good. Yeah, I was up there, and that's why I had a nose up to uh, gain that 15 degree angle, just to uh, do it. And at that speed, I don't know. Yeah. And it was what uh, thirty miles away. Yeah, yep. You can get a you can get a decent shot at twenty five thirty miles, decent. But yeah, probably maybe right there. And I did I, in the heat of the moment. I think when we turned right off right before you got hit here, I found myself making my uh, Fox three call, and I was in sim mode. And then I look down to where I feel it, and I'm mashing down that freaking uh, pickle button. I'm like, God damn it! I wasn't supposed to do that. So yeah. I wonder what. I, what yeah, that's uh, why. I, <laughs> yeah, it probably, I'm it, sorry, guys. I'm I did. End, because I did the same thing. Uh, am I supposed to hit the pickle button or? <laughs> and I yeah. know I wasn't supposed to, and I did. That's probably why my uh, landing gear stopped working. Blew it out. <laughs> yep, that's it. One hundred percent. Yep. Integrated avionics and landing gear. Yep. And I'm lucky I, I just called it out. I I did not hit the pickle button. Uh, let's see. Go. Let's go to Juddy. So Juddy, what what is one thing you learned today? To say uh, the biggest thing is probably just more brevity. Um, you know, especially targeted and committed. I didn't know that before. Yeah. I also I also learned that when you're playing Thunderbirds, it's not a good idea to invert your jet and you know apply negative G's. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> My avionics light came on quite quickly when I did that. <laughs> um, let's see. Go Howard. Howard Day. What'd you What'd you learn today? I learned the difference between committed and targeted. Nice, nice. And uh, comms were good tonight. I always had SA. Um, I need to uh, be quicker with uh, my callouts because I was. Uh, I know sometimes like I, I wanted something, but I didn't know like the exact numbers. I know I called out one uh fox call the range incorrectly. Uh but they I think they, they knew what I was talking about, so I just left it. So yeah. I just gotta look at the uh FCR a little bit more because I before I was um making a mistake of, of calling the bullseye on the bottom left of my HUD. Instead of the one on the FCR. Oh, yep. I did that once today, too. Because it's just, it's quicker and it's right there, and it's my approximate location. Yep, you're calling your own bullseye? The approximate location of the target. Well, that's your own bullseye, that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know, like, like 20 miles from there. Oh, that's fair, yeah. Look in the area, anyway. Oh, okay, so uh, whenever you have a fox call, you should call which bullseye on the screen. 
on the FTR. Yeah, that's why I call tonight. The lower left there corner. There are bullseyes on the FC, FCR, yeah, right? right the, yeah, there's one there's, with a circle, yeah, and then yeah. there's another one. I'm using the, the one on the bottom left. Yeah, the, the, the numbers, numerical one. That's the one you got to call? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the one without the circle? Yes. Because okay. the one with the circle is, is your, it's you, that's where you are. So when you make a fox call, you should say where the missile is targeting, not where it was shot from, basically. Correct. Correct. Because people want to know what okay. you're shooting, where you're shooting at, or what you're shooting at. Okay, because my my thought process uh, was okay. So you make a fox call because if you. Go, did it go blank? What the heck is happening? Testing, can you hear me? Testing, testing? Yep, you're good. Yeah, my Discord just had a stroke. It does that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know if you guys finished that conversation with the bullseye stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was, I was letting him know. Um, yeah, so yeah, bullseye. Uh, I was going to show. Yeah, so any other, uh, Rody, what, what did you learn today? What did you, one thing you learned? Uh, basically, we've gone over all of this, and I did have it, but my uh, brevity need, still needs some help. Um, are they, uh, I believe I. Yeah, I did uh, get behind you some uh, uh, somewhat. I dragged dragged off behind you. Um, I did. I don't know if it was right or wrong, and you guys tell me. But as as um, when I'm number two. Um, keeping an eye on my number one and also keeping an eye on, uh, the FCR. And if I see targets and my, uh, my lead doesn't tell me, I lock it up and send data. Right or wrong. I don't know. Um, uh Personally, for me, I think it's such a preference. I personally, uh, I personally liked it, so I know that that that's what you're looking at at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I think it just increases SA overall. Okay. Um, I think, at least for me, uh, when I'm flight lead, I prefer to um, have my wingman sort uh, like his opposite. So if we're coming up two v two. I want my wingman to sort the left guy, and I'll sort the right guy. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, yeah. The default. Yep. And that's uh, uh, default is always uh, two for two, one for one. Yeah. And, and we'll go over that later on. But yeah, the lead, lead. Depending on which side you're on, you would take that side. 
a uh, lead would take the leading one, two would take the trailing one, and then lead would take the higher one, and number two, wingman would take the lower one. That's like the default sorting. So when you go into a thing, two is automatically go into the trailing. Exactly. And, and you would you would voice uh, if you're locked and sorted, you would say two sorted trail, and then one would be like perfect. See, I, I hard a um, you could. I did not say that, but I believe we had it right. Yeah, yeah, I I gave you the directive and and you acknowledged, so that was that was good enough for me. Um, yeah, the bad was yeah getting so way behind my number one. Or in this case, was number three, and I do get that confused if I'm number four. I still think that I'm number two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard heard uh, well, um, like when you're going down the line, you could say four, but you're number two. So I was like, oh, oh, you could say two, but you're number four. Get confused. Exactly. I got to work on that. That's my my dyslexia. I do have a the, problem with that. The, everyone looking at my screen here, you see on the left side. I don't think you can see my mouse, but you see how it's uh the ten percent or ten degrees. Uh, Diego, do you know how to do this with the hotas only? So you can do this temporarily with the hotas, make it uh, smaller, skinnier like this. The field of regard, yeah, you, the two bars. Yeah, you touch the edges of the screen, left or right, and it makes it smaller and again all the way large. Right? Are you talking about the FCR or am I speaking gibberish? The the FCR. So I I go into a so this is half. I go into a a, a even smaller. Field of regard. In a second here, I'll see if I could if it goes in there. But yeah, see if I, yeah right here. So it goes into a smaller. It's ten degrees here. So with that, you could do uh, you hold TMS up, you hold it down, and it'll give you that ten degrees. So your radar will look at only within these two bars here. So this is how you could. Yeah. Go ahead. I usually use that whenever I want to burn through a jammer. Yes. Yep. Either burn through a jammer or you have two people who are close and you want to get updates on both really quickly. But yeah, burning through jammer is, is you use that as well. Okay. So so um, if anybody didn't know that, yeah, it's a if you hold yeah, TMS up. Too. Yep. Man, you could interject in there and add something to it. Yep. Okay. Uh if it's yellow, that means somebody else has locked onto it. Uh, like right now it's yellow. Like you talked about, yeah. So no, that means that your your uh radar is uh, I'm in T TWS, so it it sees it as a contact. If you see a IDM, a data link yellow, that means someone else is locked onto it, or they sent you data. Right. That's what I meant. Yes. Yep. So do you fire in an STT prime? Yep, I do. Okay. Is there? I'm gonna get out, gonna get out of here, guys. So I'll see you later, and thanks for thanks for setting things up, Prime. Yep, Thank appreciate you, it. Man. See you next time. See you, Take man. Care. Is there any um, advantage in searching in TWS versus RWS? So, or is it preference? It's it's preference because because I need to know quickly uh, what the aspect of everybody is. So as uh -huh. yesterday, you could see the exact aspect of every of all the bandits in that area. I need to see who's cold, I need to see who's hot, I need to see who's beaming. So that's an e easy way to see instead of just either towards you or away from you. That's that's not enough information. So I was using TWS for a little bit there to uh, to get a uh, target or an aspect of everything. And Prime, those bars, that's the uh, azimuth bars, right? Uh, The blue? Yeah. Yeah, the, the field of regard. That's where the, you see the, the T at the bottom? It's going back and forth. Oh, yep, yep, yep. So, so that's what it's. That's literally what the radar is doing. Yeah, that's yeah. your antenna. And then on the left side, you see the T going up and down in little increments. That's it's doing the elevation. So, uh, we'll go over it later. The four bars versus two bars versus one bar. So it's literally going in a a pattern. Uh, searching the st the space in that area.
I try to go so over here I noticed that okay yeah right here so see right here I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, at these guys right here I'm trying to get them this guy's cold I don't know how far this guy is because he's jamming and I go to the right I look right here shortly so I do that I see mode 4 I know that's friendly there and then at any moment here I go to the right to, to, to see if anybody else is around so I go to the right and I'm like is anybody else here I'm like, cool, no one's there. So I go back to what I was looking at. But so be because because my field of regard is only looking on the left side, I'm not going to get anything on the right side. So I have to periodically look over there to see if anybody's over there. Right. And you can definitely get fixated on here. And then, like, you get a 27 spike on, like, the 2 o'clock position. And you would have knew he was there if you would have looked. But instead, you knew he's, you know he's there because he spiked at you and he's, like, 20 miles away. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, another thing I did is I was uh, I did something different, and I was I had my SCR looking at eighty miles instead of the forty I usually do. Yeah. So targets were a little bit like closer. Well, at least it looked closer on the FCR. Um. So like where it, when it said that they were around like twenty five miles, I thought that they were uh, closer to fifteen. Oh, okay. Based off of the 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 uh, maximum or the 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 range. Yeah. They're in the middle. Yeah. And here, here was my favorite. This was nice. So here, I'm, I'm looking around, looking for people, and then I'm at 80 miles. So here, things jumping around around the 40 mile mark. So that's a, that's a on my priority list. There, I notice there's someone else 80 miles away. I'm not really worried about him, but I do know he's there. And I get a 27 on my RWR, and it's on the 12 o'clock position. So that could correlate to the 12 o'clock position on your FCR. So it's one of these one of these guys are hot. So I look at this guy right here. I know, I know you can't see my mouse, but my 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 cursor's on him. The guy that's cold that my uh, FCR cursor's on. And then I try to switch to the other guy. At some point, because uh he, he's cold, so it's that's not his 27 spike. So I'm like trying to find this hot guy, and I'm I'm assuming it's that jamming one. And I'm like, and he disappears, and he shows up again. I'm like, oh, there he is. Yep, there he I is. find him, lock him up, look on the TGP, zoom in, F15, and I'm 25 miles away, perfect shot. But I don't shoot because he's he's uh, beaming, and and as as friendly as to the to the to the west or the the yeah the west, and he's cold and turning cold, so there's not really a threat here. And and he's passed on my DLZ, so I transition. To someone else, the other people try to check up on them. This guy's hot, twenty-seven thousand. I don't know how far the the jammer is. And then he pops up. I look at him, nineteen thousand. I, I don't see anything else. So I, this is like a idle period. So I'm like, all right, I guess it's good now. Still kind of getting updates, looking at distances, twenty-four miles. And I'm getting close to the border there, so I turn cold. Got a question, and I know I should know this. How to switch? How do you switch over without pressing the um, uh, the buttons on the MFDs? Switch over DMS what? left and right. DMS left and right. Oh, sorry, no, no, no. DMS down. DMS down. Uh, to switch to yeah, to switch from uh, left screen to right screen. No, no, no. Yeah, that I have is for the bar screen. Uh, oh, he's not, right oh. now you're on three bar. Oh, oh yeah. You move the cursor to the left or right end. Oh, okay. Yeah, you could do that. You talking about you talking about the A three, the bars there, or oh, the B three in that yeah. case? Yeah. It, exactly. it it does it automatically. So if I'm in, if you're in sixty degrees, I think it's four bar. I like by default. And then you go into spotlight mode. Yeah. Some point. Is TMS up. And you you were spotlight. Or you could just use OSB seventeen. Yeah, you could you could always click the button. Yeah, that's what I mean. Without clicking the button. But you could you TMS change it by uh, TMS and then the bumping it to the left and right. So you could I could bump to the left, it'll go to sixty degrees. I can okay. bump a left again, it'll go back to thirty degrees, and then I could spotlight for that. You know, see, uh, azimuth yeah, ten is still doing four bars there, then it goes back to three at thirty. So it's like an automatic 
um, adjustment. So when you're at, I guess when you're at 30 degrees, it's three bar. When you're at four, 60 degrees, I'm guessing it's four bar. And then uh, when you're spotlight, it's at four bar as well. Yeah. Uh, bring up some visualizations here. Docs. This. I gotta get some sleep, guys. I got work in the morning. All right. Appreciate it. Yep, yep. Get ready but, to say the same thing. All right. So I'll see you guys real soon. Yep. Hey, Prom. Yeah. Yo. Guys, before you go, uh, when you want to do this for your uh, class next week? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Friday on, uh, let's see. Definitely over the weekend. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Um, tomorrow I'll see. Maybe not tomorrow, but yeah, we'll definitely link up Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And uh, yeah, get a couple of clips. I got a couple of ideas.